What's up, pen and ink fans? This is Tom with Gold Spot Pens. Here again, it's Friday, and working from home, writing from home still. So, what are your plans for this weekend? Mm, I'm thinking I'm going to be staying home. Might be watching some stuff on TV, maybe go take a walk with the kids, play in the backyard, straighten up that backyard, because, man, it is like a jungle out there. It's going to be like that if I keep letting it go for a few more weeks. So, what I have for you guys today is something that we do a decent amount of at the office, or at least I'm the principal caretaker of this particular task, is testing fountain pens before they ship. We get a lot of requests, and it is definitely something that is warranted with particularly this brand, is that people want to make sure that their pens come in writable, perfect condition. So one of the brands that we particularly focus on is Visconti. And you might have heard some talk in the background about, uh, hey, how's it going? Uh, nomad Wanderer from Sacramento, but maybe not for long because he's a nomad. Um, he or she is a nomad, but uh, currently as of Sacramento. But uh, that was in the chat. Um, but, uh, but yeah, Visconti particularly, there's a few other brands that people have requests for, and I am certainly willing to oblige. This particular pen is one that uh, was actually uh, is on order from a customer. I will pull it up in just a second, but it is a Visconti pen that they requested to have tests and just to make sure that everything is okay with it. So we're gonna take a look at it because I know that there will be an issue. I've kind of already kind of glossed over it a little bit and uh, you know wanted to take care of it for you guys on to, to see what you would expect when it comes to having a quality controlled pen before it ships, of course. So let's take a look. I'll switch over to my station here. I'm switching the camera. Oop. Sorry about that. Okay, see my feet. All right, so pen in question here is a Visconti Divina Elegance. This is the Imperial Blue. It's a beautiful looking pen. Quite dearly priced, as my one friend from Karandash says, it's the expression dearly priced. Palladium trims, palladium striping. The barrel has a twist in both the material and also these palladium stripes that run down the barrel and the cap. The Visconti medallion on the top is removable, so you could use the My Pen System removable stones or uh, s different uh, signs on there. And then you have the Visconti spring-loaded bridge-style clip, very tight clip. Open it up, it's got the hook safe uh, cap system, which is familiar to the Homo sapiens line as well. So you can see the nice deep grooves here that make that hook lock system. And we have the section here, all made of the same uh, marbled I think they call it acryloid or it's acrylic. It's it's pretty much a a, a chatoyant uh, deep blue acrylic. Hey, what's up, Barry? I know Barry from Colorado. And this is the 18 karat nib, Visconti nib. So first thing I would definitely take a look at is overall the fit and finish of the item, especially if somebody just wants to take a a look at just making sure that everything is okay with it. So we're looking particularly at the just the overall pen, just to make sure there's no marks, no scuffs, no dings, no dents, no chips. Everything looks good. So I'll take a look at the cap too, take a look at just the overall fit and finish of everything. So everything looks good, aside from maybe which you could just polish up a little bit with the uh, the palladium stripes. They'll get some fingerprinting on there, but you could definitely polish that out when you uh, when we put this back in the box because I'm handling it, of course. So my it's it's a polish to a mirror finish. So anything is touching that is going to kind of leave a little smudge. But overall, looks beautiful. Really, the thing that we have to focus in on when it comes to fountain pens is the nib. The nib and feet are very, very sensitive and prone to being thrown out of 
uh, alignment. And that's going to really cause most of your issues when it comes to hard starts, scratching, uh, flow issues are going to be the alignment. Oh, asking, does it post? It does not, I wouldn't, no, it doesn't feel right to me. Oh, you know, there we go. It kind of posts in a certain way. So you have to kind of put, you have to put it so that the, the stripes actually continue the pattern throughout the cap. So you have to be kind of delicate with it though, because if you do put it on the wrong way, you're probably going to cause some issues because it gave me some resistance when I was trying to put it in a different way. But yeah, it does, it does meet with capabilities of being able to be posted. Good question. Um, so one of the things I, def I definitely focus on are the nib here. And this is a, um, this is a Bach nib. I'm going to try to get this so you could be able to see it on camera here. So a couple of things I look for right away is that you have to look at the very tip of the nib to see if both halves of the tines are meeting with each other. It could be possible that when you get the when you have the nib that the one side might be misaligned with the other and that will definitely cause scratching e uh, even if it's just slightly like it's a, let's say if it's perfectly even like this is showing like it's pretty much perfectly even. I was looking at it before to see if there was an alignment issue, but this is even. So I don't have to worry about trying to take it out of alignment uh, to, to put it back into alignment because it is even. Another thing I would take a look at too is the slit itself. So the slit between the tines should start from that crescent breather hole there should start as a thicker line, and then as it gets towards the tip, it should be thin. It should it should taper. So that line should that that slit should taper from the breather hole down to the very tip of the nib, which it does. And the nib itself seems like it has a very closed that there's not any gap between the tines right there, which is characteristic of what this is is a fine point. So a fine point, an extra fine point, that's something that you would see there is that you would see the look, it looks appears like the nibs, uh, the tines are touching, that there isn't going to be any space between them. You do want like a little bit of space when it comes to writing with a wetter writer, um, which you would see more often in a medium or a broad nib or a stub nib. You would see like an actual little bit of a gap in between the tines there. So overall visual inspection, the nib is good. However, when I went to go test it, probably here because it is pretty quiet, my office over here, it's got, it's got lots of feedback. And for an 18 karat gold nib on a pen that's worth well over 600, I, was, I forget how much this is. This is probably like a, towards towards the nines, I would say, probably about the $900 range. Um, that, uh, you know, having a, a nib that's got this much tooth on it is is really not acceptable, at least to me. I know I know that a lot of people too is like, they'll, they'll want to check and they'll say specifically in the comments, they'll say, I really want, you know, I want to make sure to test it for smoothness, test it for flow, Definitely something willing to do as, as long as you're kind of giving us a general idea of what you're looking for. Um, but like if it writes right out of the box, like this pen will write, but it really won't be that pleasurable because it has quite a bit of feedback on it. So what we'll do is we've got some micro mesh paper. I have a little brash sim shim here and we have two different types of mylar paper. I guess yeah, I've used this before. So the micro mesh paper, its purpose is to is to kind of like rough uh, smooth out those rough patches, and then your and your mylar papers are going to be there to then give it that nice glassy smoothness, which is really what I would want to achieve with this. I know most other uh, Visconti pens that let's say do not do not have that feedback issue, it would also have that nice smooth writing quality. So what we're going to do is we're going to fill up this Divina Elegance. So this has a um, kind of like a little uh, piston mechanism that is similar to that mystery filler where it's only actuated, the piston mechanism is only actuated when you uh, move and you pull up 
on the piston knob. So you can't really, you can't operate it. Actually, you could operate it from here, but it's going to be quite difficult to gain purchase with your fingers. So we're going to fill this guy up here. Just going back and forth just a little bit so I can get the bubbles out. There we go. There. Okay. I push the button back in. My towel here. If you have any questions about testing or tuning nibs, please feel free to put them in the chat or um, I might not be looking at the chat as much, especially if I'm going to be doing some writing here. So if you want to throw them in the comments after the live feed is over with, then I can respond to them there too. So we're going to do a little writing sample. Now, line-wise, I would also keep in mind that this is a fine point. So line uh, width is also a concern when I test a pen. I want to make sure that it actually comes out to being what the nib size indicates. So this being a fine point, I'd say is pretty spot on in terms of the actual uh, line that is coming out of this pen. So uh, as far as flow is concerned, I feel that the line width and the flow are good. It just has a little bit of that feedback that would probably drive me crazy, to be honest, from my perspective, being that this is such a, you know, an, a dearly priced pen, 18 karat gold nib, but you could hear audibly the scratchiness of this pen. However, being that we have some knowledge about how to remedy this, this is something that we could take care of. And then that, when you receive it, you won't have to even deal with it. So I have here the Micromesh paper, or Micromesh, it's kind of like a very fine, fine grit sandpaper, 12,000 grit. And what I would then do is taking the pen and you would have to do varying angles. So so like I would first maybe start at a lower angle to the page. Let's say this is the page. I'm going lower. And I would do figure eights. Keeping the nib even, so I'm not roll I'm not rolling it from side to side. I'm just keeping it even so it gets that underneath. Then I'm going to change the pitch up. So I'm going to go from this pitch to about like a 45 degree angle. I'm going to do the same thing here. Oh, what ink this is? This is uh, Leonardo Turquoise. It's a great ink. Love it. Beautiful blue color. So then also what I did was I went from 45, and now I'm close to about like a 90 degree. I wouldn't say that I would expect anybody to be writing at a 90 degree angle, although some people could. It just doesn't really work out well with fountain pens. You kind of need to have that angle to the page, but I will kind of go a little bit higher up on the pen just to cover my bases. Because, I mean, ultimately, unless somebody specifies what angle, I mean, if they know even what angle they write with, um, you know, like you wouldn't really know what it is that they're, how they're holding the pen, how they're writing with it. You can't really predict it unless you actually saw them do it. So just kind of testing what we've got here. Still has that graininess about it. So we could kind of work on it just a bit more. And this is, um, you know, this is this is kind of like a, a, a like the, this whole tuning process is a process of small increments. 
because you don't want to blow way past what smooth would be. And then all of a sudden you've got yourself, instead of a fine point, you've got yourself a, a medium point, you know, or, or something that is, is even broader than that because you could, you could then like, let's say wear out. Cause I mean, this is what you're doing is you're taking a, a, a friction surface and you're actually wearing on that material. You're wearing it away. You're, you're trying to wear off those hard spots on it. Polishing it up requires an abrasive material to do so. So that's what we're doing right now, but you don't want to go too far. So it's a series of very small tested adjustments. I could kind of feel that I have the downstroke. Downstroke is much smoother than it was before, but my, my side to side strokes, well, yeah, it, it still could just use some more. So I'm going to keep going at this. And then once I feel that I've got like the decent smoothness that I don't feel that hard, scratchy, scritchy feeling anymore, then that's when I'll start to go to the Mylar paper. So I kind of feel it a little bit. So then this this is also what I would do too, is because people some will sometimes then roll the pen as they write. And that's what I feel like I sometimes will do here. And I'll catch more of that scratchiness on the side of the nib. So then that's when I'll go in and be like, okay, well, my this this neutral position is good, but if it rolls slightly, then that's I'm gonna feel a whole heck of a lot of scratchiness. So I'm gonna go then at an angle and polish that side of the nib. Just very lightly, because I said, like I said, this is going to be a an adjustment of very small changes. All right, so I like it. I like it now. I, I got rid of, and this is something I feel also too, um, I wouldn't try it at home with jumping to a pen of this caliber. If you're going to make adjustments to your nibs and play around with your nibs, be sure to go with something that you don't mind that you're going to screw it up. And if you take a nib, and I will disclaim, if you take a nib and you start screwing it, you know, changing around yourself, and then it just goes way past where you want it to, don't come back to me saying, oh, well, you know, I warned you, um, which I'll actually put a, a warning in the, in the notes here too, is that, you know, it's, it's something that requires experience in doing, and I would start off with the low end. So if you have pens that are, let's say, Jin Hao's or like really inexpensive pens, like 20 bucks or less, like Lamy Safaris or things like that, Covecos, um, try it with those first before you do anything else with your really expensive pens because uh, it does take some um, experience with, especially with that feeling of like trying to feel where you're at in terms of the, the, the smoothness is concerned. So like when you start to kind of feel get a good feel for like if you're making adjustments that are working and that actually work for the smoothness of the pen, then that's when you could start to go upwards in your experience because that's how I learned essentially. I, I had to learn on things that were cheap and expensive and I, I kind of worked my way up with the comfort ability of working on nibs that are you know of this caliber. So I would go to then the, the green paper is a 0.3 micron micro, uh, sorry, mylar paper. So this is also like a very mild abrasive. You might hear like some squeaking, but like I'm essentially just polishing up all parts of the nib at different angles at a very light pressure. So this is almost as if I'm trying to write on this paper 
not putting much pressure at all. Just a feather, feather light touch. And then I have the, and this is like an even finer degree of the, my, of the uh, Mylar paper. Uh, material on this uh, pen, on the uh, Davina, this is a, it's, it's an acrylic, I suppose. It's like an, they call it, I think, acryloid. It's a, it, it's a, it's an Italian acrylic. They put these palladium stripes in, uh, in the twisting barrel of this pen. So I'm just putting the finishing touches on. Oh, the material of the nib is uh, 18 karat. This is an 18 karat gold nib. Which Visconti had changed most of them out from the 23 karat over the last year. So we used to have the 23 karat palladiums. Now we have the 18 karat gold. All right. And they are made uh, by Bach, these nibs. I was saying, I think it was the uh, the Caveco Supra. You could tell by the, the feed. This is a Bach feed. I feel like I could still feel a bit of that scratchiness here, but sometimes I'll, I'll feel it's like, okay, it could be like in a certain part of it. I think it's on this side. I'm feeling it as I'm rolling to the left slightly. So that'll be the part that I focus on here is going to be on the left side. This very lightly because it's a, such a small, minute sort of feeling that I'm getting from it. I'm going very light. I'm not going to do much, but I keep doing my figure eights because that really covers all of the angles that this would possibly write at. And that's what you really have to do is you have to kind of go from the one side, you know, you could be able to write. And some pens will have a smaller sweet spot where really you have to keep it still at this neutral position. You can't roll it this way or you can't roll it on that, on that end. But the Visconti... You can at this this particular nib has got a good like a nice big sweet spot so you could afford to roll it this way and that but what I'm accommodating for is the fact that the end user will roll it this way or will roll it that way so you, you really want to cover your bases because I just don't know like I, if if they if they write up top here will it be smooth if they top here. If they if they write over here this way, will it be smooth? And right now, I'm pretty I'm pretty happy with it. I think I'll just go with a little bit more of doing it, doing the polishing here, just on the left, do on the left side, neutral position, right side, a little bit higher up, and I got the other. Paper here, finishing paper. Doing the left side, neutral position, right side, a little bit higher. And some, I mean, sometimes this this will, which is something that I could definitely appreciate when when people are saying like, oh, you know, test your nib and things like that, or or like they'll do like a grind for free or something because this. You know, it takes a while to really kind of get this down pat. I could kind of still feel it. I feel a bit more of a drag just going from the left, right to left. Okay, left to right. I still feel a little bit of a drag. 
So I'm going to just go, uh, this is where I would only do it, let's say, in one direction, because I'm just feeling the drag in this particular direction. Very, very light, so I don't want to throw off anything else about this that I've got going on here. Okay, so the... Handwriting's not the best today. Hey, I'm on the, uh, I'm doing a live video. Did you just start? I'm, I'm doing it right now. My son is entering in the room. I'm, I'm on, I'm on YouTube live right now. Can you, can you head out please? Thank you. I'll, I'll be done in a few minutes, dude. <laughs> Can you close the door, please? Thank you. So just putting the finishing touches on this here. I promised him last week that we would do a video. And you know, last week he didn't want to, to hop on. But we'll do, we'll do one eventually. Because I mean, they have school, they have to do the remote learning. Uh, definitely, I will be cl cleaning out this ink. I won't be doing it on this video, but I will clean out the ink prior to shipping. Um, usually what I'll do next after finishing doing the adjustments and, and the smoothing of it is that I will write usually like a one page like this in this Rhodia pad here. I'll write like a, just a, a quick little note to the customer, say your your pen has been tested, uh, you know, if we've we've smoothed out for and we've used uh, this particular ink and, and this particular note paper and everything. So that way, um, you know, it's just it's just an assurance that it was looked after and uh, and that and that we had done uh, what we could do in, in terms of being able to adjust it and, and make it right perfectly uh, right out of the box. Um, and if there's any issue, I mean, like I said, I try to accommodate for any particular type of writing stance, uh, whether you're gripping it like this, that, the other way. Um, but could be throwing something out there that would not have uh, anticipated. So of course you might be writing with it differently and may say, oh, well, you know, I'm still feeling, you know, a bit of scratchiness here, there, or other otherwise. So then that's when I would say, contact me directly, we'll work it out, you know, send it back, we'll, we'll do things, um, you know, we'll do some extra work on it just to make sure that uh, you're taken care of. So um, that in a nutshell is what we will do here. So I'll just end it at that because um, I got it pretty much to where I like this uh, nib a lot. Um, I'll just probably work on it at least for like another 10, 15 minutes, but I figure I'm not going to bore you with the tedium of that. Um, but uh, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to put them in the comments below. I could address uh, maybe some different pens in the near future. Um, you know, some uh, bring in some pens that I could take a look at that will have an alignment issue and show you how to fix that uh, using some things around the house. So, um, but, uh, you know, appreciate you guys tuning in. Uh, and as always, stay inky, my friends. Take care.